you're watching Channel 4. Now an inside look at the devotion, the euphoria and the conflict within the Hare Krishna movement, whose recruitment policy has caused them to be dubbed the Persuaders. Since I'm taking a renounced daughter, I'm much more in love. And the relationships without making love are much, much deeper. When I remember when I became devotee, and one of our vows is that no illicit sex. So, and I remember thinking, how will I live my life alone? And it was very painful. The two things I didn't want to renounce were men and chocolate. And the only thing I miss a little bit is chocolate. Because basically everything I was looking for in a man, this perfect love, this ability to be able to give everything, to have a reciprocation, I'm now finding I'm having. Namo Vishnu Padaya Prabhupada Shri Tatmine Shri Mati Gurudevaya Bhagavan Goswami Namine Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <laughs> Make their own mistakes. I mean, 
so many, especially women in this age, have come to that point because they've never met anybody that one knew what was right and two was completely unexploited, that was looking just for their welfare, that was their true well-wisher. And this is the role of the spiritual authority, of the spiritual master, and of his representatives. But we have so little experience of the true well-wisher, somebody that wants only your own good. And this is an example of real love, and this is an example that we don't find Everybody is hungry for love, to be loved and to give their love. And one doesn't actually meet it and everybody becomes disappointed, they become uh, hardened, they, become, they develop a shell of armor and protection which they need. And so when they need a spiritual man, a saintly man, as the spiritual master, they have a lot of resistance to it. And it takes a long time to surrender to somebody in spiritual authority. Hare Krishna. Happy birthday, Shri Gurudev. Thank you very much. I didn't know it was your birthday. Yes. For you? This is the itinerary for the week. Hmm. This is the report. Now, what will the program Friday be like? Twelve special guests that I've invited. I think Maharaj might have invited some other hundred or two, three hundred. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it down. What is the direction that this engagement is supposed to take all these people? These are people who are actually involved with helping the movement or um, becoming devotees. Mm -hmm. They're um, important people in their own fields and they understand. Who are we coming? Um, Princess Ali Ali Khan, mm -hmm. um, Haley Mills, mm -hmm. Hazel O'Connor, mm -hmm. Hazel's mom, Hazel's manager. <laughs> They're worried. <laughs> um, no, in fact, her mother said to Annie Misha, she came to see her, and so she said, oh, she said, my daughter's a nervous wreck. If you can do something for her, I'd be very grateful. So, she sounds very nice. How about your mother? How was she? My mother's very good. Um, perfect health, very good, but she wants to do some service. You know, all those ladies and men that you met in Palm Beach when you spoke, mm -hmm. They'd like to do something. They'd like to become involved, especially with the food program, uh, doing fashion show charity. So they're, they'd like something. They'd like you to come back. She expressed an interest last time she was here to redecorate the manor. Mm. Well, she's very good at it. Yeah. She can decorate and <laughs> pay for it also. Oh, you mean she should pay for that? Sure, of course. Could you ask her, Sri Degurde? <laughs> Ah, here it is. The Persuader. Hmm. How an ex-model recruits top stars for Hare Krishna. <laughs> Business is booming for the Hare Krishna cult. I hate when they call it a cult. You know, she was here for hours and I explained to her that it's a religion. Annie Lennox of the Eurythmics pop group, Hazel O'Connor and Haley Mills, are among their converts and the Hare Krishnas know that where the stars go, their young fans will follow. A leading light in this new Hare Krishna mission is a woman who calls herself Ritasya. Who when they say calls yourself, it's like, you know, phony. And she does her converting work at select dinner parties, society balls, and the sort of places rock stars frequent. Hazel? Tomorrow we can go up to the manor to meet Shirdagedev. I've made all the arrangements. So can you give me a call as soon as you come back? So remember I told you out of all these people, you 
extract those who are really mm. enlivened with Krishna consciousness and want to do something, and automatically that will take you to the next step with it. Hazel is coming this week. Yes, she's coming tomorrow. How is she doing? Very, very well. Hmm. When did you first meet up with her again? We, we met at the Savoy. In fact, Animesha went and met her first, and then he invited her to the house for dinner. What was her reaction when she first saw? Yeah, go off. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she didn't want to know. So what did he say to her? Um, he was giving her a cookbook. Mm -hmm. And uh, he persisted, and then he asked her, he said, oh, that's my mother there, you know, would you like to meet her, come for dinner? And then we, we started having dinners, and then uh, she overheard that I was uh, teaching Sharmini Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. we were studying. She said, oh, can I come and do that too? So then she came every day, and we studied together two, three hours in the afternoons. And it grew, and then she began to meet other devotees, and make friendships, and uh, I think she's very sincere and very special. But I think uh, it would be perfect if you could take her under your wing now. I think it's the final thing for her now. She's she ready. nervous about coming? I think so. She's uh, learning the proper etiquette for mm -hmm. presenting herself before a spiritual master. Mm -hmm. I want to go home. I wanted to go to your bathroom actually. <laughs> I did, I did. Hang on. I can do it later, I'll do it at the moment. Let's get going. Well, you might as well go now. No, let's do it up there. Okay. Because of the traffic. Okay. It's all right. What I have to do is simple. Brush my teeth. Judy Prabhupada said you should chant your rounds as though the atom bomb was hanging over your head on a thin string. That's how you should chant your rounds. Or otherwise you could just drive on this road. Hurry, Krishna! I think it's bad not to talk about the temple. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Philosophy isn't a good thing to discuss what trying to do. It's the only thing to discuss <laughs> on this you road. Your rounds. Hurry, you Claire. Can. You turn yours. <laughs> I'll drive. I can't take you with me. <laughs> The, the song that got me famous was a song called The Eighth Day, which um, was about man pertaining to be God. And I just took, n nicked it out of the Bible, really, the seven days of creation, but I changed it to man creating things like submarines and bombs, and <coughs> eventually he created clones, and man blew his own world up. That's what the song was about. But it was a hit. It was a big hit in England. <laughs> <laughs> the doom, the doom side of things. But that's what I thought at the time. But since I've been talking with Ritasia and coming here... What's attracting you back to Krishna consciousness? Well, I don't think I went that far, to be honest. And not, I don't, I'm not being pretend, I don't mean it in that way, excuse me. I mean that I was... I was always aware <laughs> that there are flies that bother you in this world. Uh, no, I was always somewhere in the back of my mind aware that, that um, there's, there's power, but that's as far as I've got. So who are your friends now? Maharaj, Natasha, hopefully you in a while. But I, I'd rather just stick with the people that I really like because I trust them. Then.
Om Kishaya Namaha. It's like Shri once said to me, he said, um, Yes, he said, we attract men. So I thought, what? So he said, yes, you attract them for me. In other words, it's no longer a thing where you, you go out to attract men for your own purposes. But you go out to attract men and women, you know, for, uh, for God, as it were. Again, you look at what's the outcome of the seduction. And I know in my life, the outcome of seduction is always painful. Ultimately painful. It's not that there's no happiness in material life. There are, but it's, it's like compared to drops of water on the desert. That you can be happy temporarily. But I never found that it continued at the pitch. I wanted it to get more and more and more. My happiness, my love. But I found that it didn't. It either became mundane or it usually disintegrated completely. You know, so... Uh, that wasn't enough. Whether I'd been a model or not, I would have been trapped in the same image. I just, the image was there. Then it was just, in a sense, exploited by other people and by myself um, to get the things that, it was like armor. When you go into battle, you need a certain amount of armor. So this was my armor, and uh, truth be told, it was very effective. It's still very effective. But armor, or the outer covering, as it were, once you have some spiritual knowledge, you realize it's a tool. Whatever your opulence is, beauty, um, great wealth, it's a tool that you use in the service of God. So it's not that you have to um, I mean, I wouldn't become more spiritual by, um, you know, going around being less. That wouldn't make me more spiritual. But it's a good tool because it attracts, basically I'm a preacher. My job is to attract people. So it's one of the tools. Now, if that's all I have, if there's, there's nothing there, if there's no, if you're a, a glossy painting of a dinner, but there's no real food to give them, then that's very tragic. And that's what would have happened ultimately to me. And I was almost, um, even within this room, the condition comes, even when you wake up every morning, actually you wake up every morning, oh, oh, right. wake up every morning. Everything is done as service to God, so you do it the absolute most perfect, most beautiful way. Everything is an offering. So then it's, it's like being in love with God, the spiritual, spiritual master, he is the expert teacher. That's exactly what God is. We have all these things. You can make this for Richard. Would you like to come out from the office and have something like this once in a while? Sorry, after that, keep going, man. Ooh, texture. Krishna, would you like something to eat? Yeah. Let me see you eat some first. Hi, Krishna. Yeah. Let me see you eat some first. You want to share with me? I don't it's mind. It's fantastic tonight. Yeah, come on. You enjoy this? She don't mean it, you know. She don't. There's peas, um, grains, a little puree of, you yeah. know, no, listen. She all the vegetarian. Is, she the thing is. <laughs> Son of a What's the problem? <laughs> no problem. Yes, I do occasionally. Eventually, I want to do a book about people like you that come to meet the spiritual master, what you say, how he answers. But I want to do it very beautifully and also the movement, but in a way that really will appeal to people, and excite them, inspire them, so they, and also break down a lot of misconceptions about what actual spiritual life has to be. <laughs> I'd love to. To do it properly. I mean, so many people think you have to give up everything and that you have to be miserable, but I mean, it's not so bad, is it? No intoxication, so you've got a clear sense of intelligence to discriminate what is spiritual and what is material. No illicit sex life. That means I don't just see women as a product where I can release some frustrated desires and they don't see me as some product or some financial asset. 
that I can provide home and financial security. So instead of marriage just being, you know, I like you, you like me, okay, let's get together. That is doomed to failure. <laughs> because I like you now, but you know, after a while my likes change and then, you know, I like her better now. No, I wasn't. Like her better. <laughs> yeah. So that's sad. But if it's a question of, I like Krishna, you like Krishna, okay. We can get on very nicely together for a long time. There's an island somewhere in one of the great oceans of the world where they actually worship the Duke of Edinburgh because he came out of an aeroplane. If you put a stone on a mantelpiece and after a week or so you add a flower to that stone, pretty soon that stone takes on an importance and shortly afterwards you'll be worshipping that. That's the nature of religion. Anything goes. Absolutely. <laughs> Excuse me. Hare Krishna. I'd like to thank everyone on behalf of Srila Gurudev and all the devotees here at Bhaktivedanta Manor for our guests coming tonight and especially to Hazel and Maharani and our mime troupe for putting on a nice performance this evening. And I know we would all like to thank Srila Gurudev for giving us some enlightening words this evening to help us advance in spiritual life. Sincere, you know what the serious thing is? You know what the serious thing is? That concrete beneath my bloody ass. Right? And that is sincere. And that's honesty. That's my only bet. I don't get set off from no one. I don't accept it. I don't want it. If I want a little drop of soup and they come down with it, they're getting such concessions, I'm getting nothing. Well, I, I can understand some of the points. Um, main point was that nothing he was going to do or write or say was going to be printed without first being checked with you anyway. It was just, a, you know, all he wrote was a little two-paragraph blur about this nice dinner party we had and the different guests who were there and some of the things they said. And, uh, and then Srila Gurudev, the leader of the Hare Krishna movement, was, you know, gave a talk. It was a very nice little blur. Yeah. And anyway, after he spoke with you, he decided yeah. that he wouldn't print it. Print it. So. I mean, he's, he's a devotee. He's doing a lot of service. Yes, I know, but I don't know him at all. And, and therefore, whether um, Jonathan's devotee or a newspaper man, he shouldn't have been given my number. Well, that follows a particular set of circumstances, namely a very frantic phone call by Ratasha, where she was also doubting my integrity. Now this is a very a fault that she has that she does from time to time where she also fails to give even Srila Gurudev and myself the benefit of the doubt from time to time. Well, Mara, and following that frantic phone call, I, I, I said, look, it's not you girls have blown it all out of proportion. You, you know, Hazel's crying her eyes out, she's lost all faith in the movement, what have you done? And that's what you said to me. I said, wait a minute, this is getting all mad. This is not, uh, this is not correct. It wasn't correct. And I could immediately detect, as in the past when this has happened, that instead of helping her to understand the situation, you commiserated with her, and you also were starting to have a crisis of faith and doubting my integrity, and that's why I got so heavy on the phone. That you, you should. She didn't with me. She, what she said was, because uh, I asked her, did we not discuss it? Because we did, we all discussed it about right. publicity. Right. The reason so being. The publicity was for Srila Gurudev's pleasure about the evening. Now, if you didn't want to be mentioning the article, fine. fine. We, did, uh, we draw the quote on Hazel O'Connor, but Haley doesn't mind. And Haley said, it was a wonderful evening, and uh, I'd like to take my, uh, have dinner with my fathers and mothers with Srila Gurudev. You know, I mean, it's just a little article to help to, you know, because you never know with service. You see, service comes and goes. 
You come and go, Haley comes and go, I come and go. Things come and go real fast in this world. You know, it's just blips of information over the TV, blips of information in the newspapers. But the fact is, a little good news here and there builds up a, an incredible response in the public that helps us with our mission. Now that's preaching work. But wouldn't it have been better, which was what had started the whole thing off, was that if you've got somebody like me um, who's interested, who to, who's not committed, who's interested, right. who who's shown some you know some kind of commitment by willingness to learn. I'm not I'm not saying here. Yeah. I want to learn. It's not showing I'm doing this to show I'm willing to. It, I want to learn. Right. So right. learning and being with special people like Sri Gurdev yourself, okay. Mama Ratasia here. You know the whole thing is, uh, continues to be a revealing experience, like even us having this now. Right. What happens is, and I'm sure everybody that ever talks about meeting or being with devotees gets like devotee aversion every so often. <laughs> and I had a classic case of that at the end of it all, which was even, that was interesting because I had to think, <laughs> why don't I ever want to see them again? Hazel wants to do publicity, wants to do things at the right time, in the right way. And the point is, it's not something you can just rip off these people. They have but, to yeah, but that's my point. No. When you what? use that kind of language with me, that's inappropriate. What? Because what? I'm not a rip-off. I'm not trying to rip off anybody. Who, Who used that? That's I did. Point. Yeah, and that's my point. If you feel in your heart that this is what I tried to do this weekend. No. Well, then why does she say those words? But I think it's a very bad idea to put the things in that news of the world. When the point is, you promise. I, I don't know news of the world anymore. All I ask is Jonathan, write a little blurb but and you, check it back with me, and we'll check with Hazel Seals. And, we'll and if everyone likes it, and Sheila Gurdjieff liked it, and he said it should go in. Sheila Gurdjieff liked it, and he thought, oh, that's wonderful, put it in. Oh, my gosh, you promised, Hazel, that there would be no press. That's right, and therefore, yes. I was going to check with Hazel before we published it. The main point of the thrust of the article was because there was a dinner for Sri Gurudev and several people came and Haley Mills said this and Hazel said that. Now if Hazel doesn't want to say that at the dinner, it's fine with me. I'm not attached. But what I, what I don't appreciate is being told on the phone, like you just told me now, that I'm a ripoff or that, you know, I'm going to mishandle people. When the fact of the matter is... But that was the mishandling of her. She was completely freaked out. It did and all you now, to now say, hold on, now two points here. Right. First off, as Hazel pointed out, sometimes she goes potty anyway. So, no, I mean, not anyway. No, not this anyway. This is, this is, these are the reasons. Her. That's why I said That's right. That's but why I asked all she you. had to do was call me. All, all, all she had to do was to, for the two of you to come over and see me. We could have cleared the whole thing up in a second. Well, but well, instead, yes. you called me up and try and and tried to accuse me that I wasn't being uh, very, I was having very much in, uh, integrity in this situation. No, I said it was just premature. I didn't say anything about integrity. I said I was very worried I, that Hazel I was freaked out. the word, but you were I using said the information that... That I was worried about what was going on. And, and if you had only said to me, don't worry, we won't use anything unless we always ask people, that would have been the end of it. Ritesha, no, it's not just myself, it's others too. In the beginning, when you first started coming around, you had a missionary spirit, but the, the perverted twist it took was that Srila Gurudev was an instrument for your plan to save the world. Going back to your days with Castro and Che Guevara and all that, you know, revolutionary spirit, you saw in Srila Gurudev a very powerful... Somebody who had it right. Right. We could, a real and spiritual master. that you could use to save the world. Now, we got over that misunderstanding that actually you're the servant of the spiritual master, yeah. the servant of the spiritual master, not your servant, yeah. but there's still residues of that attitude. What I, you know, your avatar complex. That you're God. An avatar means a divine descent, a personality who descends from the spiritual realm to save others. Now, 
your tendency is to think that because on one level you're able to attract people to this movement, mm -hmm. that you're very successful and potent. But the real fact of the matter, which Sheila Gritty and I have gone over with you many times, is that that's about where it ends. You don't have the power and spiritual austerity and knowledge yourself to take them much further beyond that initial attraction. But when you get all attached to trying to, you know, completely manipulate the situation as per Hazel or anything else, and then you doubt or you think that I'm interfering with your master plan, which is what you said over the phone, then we have a basic problem again where you use the words, this is not according to our master plan. And I pointed out to you, I said, whose master plan? Srila Gurdjieff and I haven't discussed this with you, so whose master plan are you talking about? And this is where, and it was the same old consciousness that you had before. Manifesting again, only this time Hazel was the catalyst. Now, I'm not perfect. And when, when I get a lot of pressure on me from all directions, as I have when Sri Ludigrini is there, when we're coming to the end of the week, everything, and I get a phone call, and at least to my ears, it sounds panicky, it sounds weird, it's not giving me the benefit of the doubt, it expresses the idea, like you just did a minute ago, that I'm just ripping off Hazel for some cheap publicity scam. Well, you know, I have to that's, admit that I got a little offended. But that's how the And so I just reacted, all right, listen, the buck stops here, don't worry about it, click. You know, because I'm in the middle of a meeting with Shilagrit, I'm not going to take out time at that point to go into the whole thing with you when it's, frankly, you should have a little more faith or what Gurudev said was, give us the benefit of the doubt, nothing's going to happen. Now, that's where I'll have to be humble today and say, no, and really, honestly, that it was a little inexpert. That much I, I definitely have to beg Mother Tasha's forgiveness oh. that I was a little heavy-handed with her due to not remaining transcendental. But still, <laughs> but I just like to say, that when, then we have to, at that point we have to separate yes. style from content. And what now was, was the content of what I was saying correct or not? And I, I think I was correct. Now the style may have been a little heavy handed. And for that I apologize. Yes. So you've been feeling a little estranged? Very. Why do you think? It seems um, that everything I start to try to do for you, I, I start to do it and then it gets either taken away or somebody comes in or I'm not told and everything then falls apart. And so, you know, it happens once or it happens twice, so you tolerate it. And then, but it's becoming just the whole pattern of everything. Well, the, the point is that there's a principle which we're missing. And that is that uh, because you keep yourself isolated from the devotees, and even with Maharaj, the ability to communicate is breaking down. See, it's not just the few devotees that you're attached to, it's even Maharaj and even me. You feel that no one can understand you, that you are the best one to understand you. And no one can understand you. But if you are going to take a spiritual master, then you have to at least try to take his instruction first. Almost like it's axiomatic, it's, it's complete and it's perfect for you. If we want to denigrate the position of spiritual master to just someone who's just got an opinion, and he has his opinion and I have my opinion. Now certainly there's some discussion, but ultimately there's siddhanta, there's conclusion. And you always have to accept the conclusion. Just like Arjuna had to ultimately accept the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita. So if I speak to you, or even some older devotee like Maharaj is speaking to you, 
and it's just you refuse to accept that, then experience what it's like. And you do experience what it's like. Whenever you just refuse to accept, you become completely disheartened, even though you're using that independence. And you've seen when actually you've, you've accept, you have accepted and you've done it in a humble mood that actually Krishna has given you success. I don't want you to think when you come, I come in the door, you say, oh, here's this woman again. You know, I want to bring you something and I want to do, I want to do something out in the world. But do you possibly think you're going to be able to do that with any, without any instruction from me, how to do that? I'm always learning from you. Always. I won't listen What's to your tapes learning? all day. <laughs> listening to tapes is one thing. But when we're talking about how to do your specific service, that's another kind of class, isn't it? Mm. And you're so attached to doing it right that you don't check before and you don't check after. You learn just how to check with me, or Maharaj, or others. Won't you get just tired like a cook. of checking no, all the time? just like a cook. A cook, Prabhupada said, after the cook finishes cooking, he's supposed to go out, personally serve it himself, and then after everyone takes, he's supposed to ask if everyone enjoyed it. And if anyone had some complaint, he's supposed to listen to it. Uh -huh. Not just he thinks because I cooked it, and I worked hard in the kitchen, therefore everyone has to like it. There may be some preparations well, that get easy. burned a little bit. That's easy. Well, that's all. If you could just do that, at all. you would find a big, big difference. You're making it more complicated than you have to. Yeah, I thought it was going Don't you want to please the devotees? Even if they're real simple devotees. Oh, yeah. Don't you want to please me? So then, if you just go and practice a little humility and ask everyone how they thought it was, you'll find that, and what more you could do, if you just adopt this little humble attitude. But that's very simple. Yes, then. <laughs> Why don't you do it? I can do that. If you read Bhagavad Gita, the first quality of knowledge is humility. Tabe Sanatana Prabhura Charane Dhariya Danya Vinati Kari Dante Trinalana Danya Humility, Humility. Vinati, Vinati Bowing, bowing. Kare Does Dante, Dante In the teeth, teeth. Trina Is straw Translation a devotee should think of himself lower than the straw in the street, more tolerant than a tree. So the principle of existence should be humility for one who has to die at any moment, for one who is so caught up in the world of duality, what is there actually to be proud about? Really there is only one thing to be proud about in this world, and that is that we are all part and parcel of Krishna, who is the greatest. As Krishna is the greatest and we are part and parcel of Him, then there is something great to be proud about. <laughs> Now, you had a meteoric rise to fame in the film Breaking Glass, didn't you? But what else has happened to you? Have you had any other big changes in your life? Really? Well, over the last year, as I said, because things weren't happening as fast as I thought they would, um, I had to search my soul a little bit as to why, why, why weren't things the way I wanted them, or why did I ever suffer, and all that kind of stuff that everybody questions. And I did actually come up to the conclusion that... Um, I think there's some kind of supreme controller and it's not me. <laughs> God, or call it what you like. And from that premise onwards, I discovered a lot of things, like I stopped eating meat and became vegetarian to see how that felt. I met with some Hare Krishna people in the movement and I started to chant 
which uh, has left me like a lot calmer. So when I work, um, I always chant a lot before I go on and I know, any time I've not been talking to you, I'm going to leave you my bead bag in a minute. Oh, great, because you've got a little counter in there, haven't yeah, you? It looks like a stitch counter. <laughs> but you, you told me it was in fact the counter Well, I'm chanting. supposed to use these, which are chanting beads, right? But because I'm in the media, this thing here, like, clocks up how many chants you do a day. And it's just a way of kind of counting what you're actually doing. And, you know, I mean, you can believe it or you don't have to believe it, really. It's just, I find it a very important part of my life, like, to grow spiritually. Well, you seem to be incredibly together now, more ways than one. I mean, you're fronting your own future now, aren't you, very much so? I think so. Calling the shots. And now you're going to do for us your latest single, is that right? That's right. From your album, and it's called It Cuts Too Deep. It did. It <laughs> doesn't anymore. Well, leave me your beads. Yes, I'll leave you your beads, just in case you get nervous. Uh, and tomorrow, Lisa Kimberley will be here again with hints on Chinese cookery. Now, Hazel O'Connor with It Cuts Too Deep. She's got a nice smell. She's a real sweet girl. Thank you, Miss. That is mine. I saw that nice girl. Now. Double, 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 double. Little does he know what a freak out she really is, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this song will be number one one day. It's a great song. It'd be a great song in America. It's just, the it's just keep pushing. Lying that face to me. 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 Lying that to entertain and to capture people's minds is quite special. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So therefore I want your career to be successful just for this purpose. And it's like the lady said, you it's a completely different Hazel. And that's, I mean, we know why that is, because you've taken such advantage of being in Krishna consciousness, actually, and you've gotten my support and Krishna's support through chanting, and uh, but you have to persevere. Well, Tass, you is an attractor. Well, attracted is it's a funny word. I, I saw her at that. Um, we'd done a concert at the. Um, Savoy and the Harry Krishna band were playing and I personally um, had a deep-rooted hate of Harry Krishna people because I had a very nasty experience with one when I was 16 and uh, to me it was like looking at a room full of demons thinking oh I hate them I hate them but then uh, I met Anamisha Ritesh's son <laughs> and he was so funny and so like wouldn't give up and then he said, come and have a cup of tea with my mother and I sometime and I looked across and I saw this woman with um, bright blue um, contact lenses in <laughs> and uh, perfectly white sari and everything was so perfect I thought this can't be for real and it made me actually want to go for that reason therefore you know I wouldn't say that probably Ritassia could attract every sort of person because you know she's got unusual qualities <laughs> but it was enough to attract me I thought she is so camp this woman what's going on and um, so Ritas is great at sort of attracting the more camp side of life, <laughs> more strange people. And um, certainly worked with me. But then after that, if I was going to carry through with a philosophy, I need, I, will, I, need, I need the best. And Srila Gurdjieff's the best. <laughs> When I was modeling and having to put my sort of my faith in the way I looked, 
Then you can say as you get older, you're on a loser's trip. But now in my life, I'm on a winning trip because the love that I'm experiencing now with the people that I teach and the people I'm close to is so sweet. And I'm a very neophyte in spiritual life. So as I'm getting better and making advancement, God willing, I will, uh, my life will become more and more beautiful, more lovely. So this is the perfect life. I mean, what's the problem? Humility has to go both ways, or it doesn't work. If humility is not going both ways between your authority and yourself, then you're, um, you're a sucker. So I have to leave now because things are very difficult here. And I don't know what the future will bring with him right now things are at a very difficult place. Um, I know that I wanted to serve everything that he represents. And actually I'm quite determined that I will. But I think spiritual life is personal. Is there anybody you can trust now? To trust? You mean to trust somebody with your entire life? I'm still waiting.